Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and today I'm excited to announce the release of not one, but two brand new patch packs for the UP6, which I've created in partnership with Korg. The patch packs are available now on the Korg shop website, and you'll find a link to them in the description of this video. The two packs are called Future Memories and Drums and Percussion, and in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the second of those, Drums and Percussion. You can find details of the other pack in another video, which I'll link to in this video's description. I'm aware that some people want to get right to the sound demos, so I'll pop them in the chapter marker so you can find them quickly. But before we get to that, I want to talk a little bit about the patches and some tips to get the most out of them. This was the second of the two packs that I completed and Korg very kindly allowed me to base a pack around what I now consider to be my own personal meme, which is to turn synths, which are not drum machines, into drum machines. The pack actually ended up being roughly split into two different types of patches. On the one hand, there are multi-sound drum machine patches, which cover a range of different styles, both acoustic and electronic, retro and modern. On the other hand, there are a range of percussion patches, which include hand drums, cymbals, struck plates and shakers, as well as electronic thumps, thwacks and blips. There were two really important goals that I set myself when I started working on these patches. The first is that they had to be extremely responsive to how you played them. I wanted them to feel as good as they sounded. The second is that with the drum machine patches, I wanted to avoid using any motion sequencing tricks to get the sounds. As fun as they are, it was extremely important to me that any of the drum sequences that I created to demo these patches could be replicated by someone sequencing in a door, using another hardware sequencer, or even finger drumming. So before I get to the patch demos, I just want to spend a couple of minutes showing you what that means practically for the patches and how you can use them. Hello, Oscillator Sync from the future here. Just a quick note to let you know that Korg have provided me with a coupon code, which will give you 50% off these patch packs for the next seven days. And you can find that code down in this video's description. So as I mentioned, there are kind of two different types of patches here. So we have the tuned percussion type patches, like this one. Which is, I think, probably one of my favorite patches in the set, which is basically a percussion instrument. Generally speaking, just one instrument, but pitched differently across the keyboard. And depending on what sort of patch it is, the amount of uh, variation that you'll get across the keyboard will, will different. Sometimes it's just kind of high pitched. In a in the case of something like this, it's really quite a different flavour up at the top versus down at the bottom. And as I mentioned, one of the things that I made sure to do is that we have a load of variation within the sort of velocity response. All of the patches incidentally will also have uh, a variation on the modulation uh, wheel, which will, depending on which patch, just give you a slightly different flavor or place it in a different sort of acoustic space, which you can sort of blend in. And in some cases will like vastly, drastically uh, change the character of the patch, essentially letting you blend between two different sort of styles of patches. So that's the um, sort of tune percussion. Let's take a look at one of the drum machine patches. Okay, this is one of the patches, which is called Practice Room, which is a drum machine patch. And with the drum machine patches, if you hit play on sequencer, you will get uh, a little drum sequence. And as I mentioned, the important thing here is that that is not done using any sort of motion sequencing or anything like that, that is purely being achieved by um, uh, creating a sort of a pseudo um, keyboard split. So uh, if we go right down at the bottom of the keyboard, we'll find kind of a kick drummy type thing, generally speaking. As we go up the keyboard a bit, we'll find some snares, a bit higher up. some sort of tune snare thing there. Hi-hat type stuff, and then right at the top, in this case we've got some sort of metallic, sort of 
twinks there. Uh, so you've got um, a sort of depending on the patch between sort of three and four different sounds across the keyboard. And if you wanted to sequence uh, this drum machine, then you just address the particular um, notes. And we'll take a look at that in just a second. But I thought I'd highlight just a couple of other things about these patches. First, uh, sort of a general thing uh, with all of the patches in this pack. Uh, obviously we have sort of velocity um, changes, but also um, be aware that most of the patches will also respond to gate length. Um, it varies from patch to patch, but um, the thing that I did on most of them is that if you strike the key and therefore have a short gate length cleanly like that, you hear that we get a nice natural tail. Whereas if you strike the key and hold the key down a long gate length, uh, it tends to kill the drum dead. It varies from patch to patch which way around I've done that. Um, I, I, in retrospect, I'd prefer to have been a little bit more consistent, but it, it depended on how it, how it felt at the time, I think. Uh, but um, the way I like to think about it in most cases is that that's like hitting a drum and then sort of keeping your hand on it rather than playing it um, cleanly like that. Um, in terms of the operator's layout here, um, a lot of these are done using user algorithms. Um, and the way I tend to lay these out is that the lower pitch stuff is lower down. Um, so if you want to, you can play um, a sequence that's um, in the sequencer uh, and use these like a uh, like a mixer almost in most cases. So here, for example, if I wanted to take out the kick drum, we can lower that envelope there, uh, that operator there, sorry. This one has taken out the metal there. So you can kind of use these um, operator sliders as kind of like performance controls with the um, sequence. That's cool without all the uh, hi hat stuff going on. Now, some of them will affect multiple parts of the sounds all at the same time uh, because um, I've had to use some tricks to get these splits. Um, but um, yeah, you can use these as, as performance controls. And obviously, messing with the ratios are also going to create uh, new variations as well. And as I mentioned, we've got our modulation controller there as well. So I created all of the demo patterns uh, within the Op6's sequencer itself. And um, the Op6's sequencer isn't set up to be a drum sequencer. Basically, it's set up to be a polyphonic um, melodic sequencer, which it does very well. Um, but in terms of actually uh, sort of creating drum grooves on it, it was an experience where I learned lots of things about the sequencer. Let's put it that way. Um, so um, if you want to um, program these uh, patches in a more sort of drummy kind of way, then it's probably better to be, to be using an external uh, sequencer or indeed just doing it in the door. Um, so as an example here, I've got uh, the SQ64 um, for the purposes of this demo, um, but uh, anything where you can assign pads to um, MIDI notes will essentially do the trick right. Um, so in this case, uh, if we come into the this pad here. Uh, this pad here is transmitting on C1, which will be a kick drum, D sharp 4, which will be a snare probably on this patch, uh, G3, low snare maybe, E6 will be like a high or metallic thing. So I've just gone through here and I've tried different notes, worked out which notes I want on each pad, and I've gone through the, per the process of assigning them, which means now if we come back into our gate sequencer here, and we could start putting down um, some kick drums maybe. And a snare. Maybe some hi-hats. Uh, what do we have on this one, I wonder? Yeah, 
yeah, we can use this patch as a straight up sort of drum synth. And we could um, still use the faders to use as a mixer. We can still get our variation on the modulation and so on. And if we um, come into some of these, um, so maybe we'll do it on the uh, yeah, we'll do it on this on this sound that we've got going on here, perhaps. Uh, so um, we can adjust the gate signs to get different variations here. We could uh, adjust probability, uh, which is not something that we could do on the opposite, because it doesn't have probability. Uh, we could maybe come into our kicks, maybe. And uh, in the mod here, we could change the velocity of some of these. And so on, uh, and, and sort of use these patches uh, like a real drum machine. Uh, and you can get quite a lot of variation going quite quickly in that way. But enough of my chat, uh, let's get on with the demos.